Hello YouTube and welcome back to another video in my one has been a while since I've last done a video. Well over two months now, but uh, as always, what can I say, I do apologise, it's uh, real life just gets in the way, work with all that. Owl, I've also just got back from the UK, I was there just over two weeks, I went to go and visit my parents and uh, some family and friends. And for the main event, which was um, replaying Blackpool, this time I took my daughter along with me. She wanted to come along to uh, see for herself what these events were like, it being her first one. Uh, she is a gamer, obviously into the modern stuff. 15, turning 16, it's understandable. Because yeah, here, you know, her school friends, you know, she doesn't have that many friends that are into gaming, so she's pretty much in her own, in her world, in her own world. So she was quite looking forward to going, you know, experiencing an event like this that just basically caters for her hobbies. So yeah, so and she thoroughly enjoyed it. She's already told me that she wants to go again next year. So so yeah, um, we started our journey to the UK on the Thursday. We got to my parents at around five in the evening, had some dinner, spent some quality time with them, and of course the next day on the Friday we started our journey early for um, for Blackpool. We got up about five in the morning. Our coach wasn't until eight o'clock, so you know took our time. Coach journey. You know, it's going to be a long one, it's almost a seven hour drive, but um, yeah, it's cheaper than going by train. So we got to Blackpool at around two-ish, three-ish, because there was a slight delay, obviously there was a bit of traffic. Uh, we dropped off our stuff at a and b We stayed at a and b called the Brioni, which was, you know, we had a wonderful stay there. Excellent um, b and there. Uh, it was also... It was literally a five minute walk from Norbrick Castle, so yeah, it's all good there. So we drop off our stuff, had some tea. Bear with me a sec. Lovely. Yeah, we had some tea, and um, after that, we um, headed into town to check out the amusements and uh, the shops. Kids for you. After which, we, no, we stayed there a bit. Spent a bit of money already in amusements, um, most, especially mostly on those 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 machines that those grabbers that you get plushies. Spent a fortune there. Um, we were trying to get the uh, doodle jump plushies. <laughs> it wasn't happening. Um, yeah, so that after which we we decided to walk back. I mean, for those who know from Blackpool Town to the Norbury, it's quite a distance, and as I mentioned, our being be literally a five minute walk so it's quite a, a, a fair bit to walk back to the uh to the b&b so we, we just we just managed to just over half the journey by by then we just got tired and took a tram for the rest of the journey um so yeah now originally i i did plan to go to the norbrick that friday evening you know i know some of you guys have planned a meet-up on a Saturday. But um, I thought I'd pop there, you know, pop around in the evening, you know, see if there's anybody here. Say hello, quick chat. But, um, you know, getting up really early, starting our journey for Blackboard. And of course, that, that long walk back, it really tied us completely. And, you know, any of that just couldn't be bothered. So, in the end, we just ended up back at the B&B, had some dinner, and spent the rest of the evening watching telly. Um, which was... That was it really for the Friday, and um, which is guiding the way because now from watching some of your videos, understanding that the the meetup happened on the uh, on a Friday, which is somewhat unplanned, so it was really guiding because I would have loved to uh, pop around there on on the Friday evening, you know, say hello, quick chat, but hey ho, can you do? Can't have it all. So that was basically the Friday. Now the Saturday we got up early, had some brekkie. Lovely full English breakfast. Um, we made our way to the Norbrick at around 10 ish. Um, wasn't much of a queue. We got in, but you know, we got in quite quickly. Uh, at the front of the queue, familiar faces already. If I do forget names, I do apologize. Not intended. But at the front of the queue, there was, you know, the likes of Richard Dave Nintendo, Cyrus Next 7. Minx 36, Cajones Deloro, Richard Turner, uh, 
I'm not too sure what was Razmataz Raz there as well. Can't remember. I don't know if um, Darth Twin Rover was there. I really can't remember. I do apologise if I've forgotten names. As I said it's not intended. But we had to go to the back of your queue. But you know, it, it moved quite quickly, so got into the event no time in no time. And of course went off to do our own thing, play some games. I'm not gonna go into any details of the main event itself. It's been done to death, it's been so many videos. Uh, the disappointing part of the event itself was the uh, the lacking trade, the traders themselves. Uh, it was disappointing. I was hoping to see the likes of Rockabilly there because they tend to spend, um, focus more on the 8 bit side of computing the, the Amstrad's, the Speckies, the Commodores, and MSX, Atari's, and whatnot. So it was really, you know, I was so hoping to see them there, but not to be. Also, um, Attic Bug wasn't there. Uh, Amiga Bay was Amiga Forever. They were not there. Obviously, the main guys, Console Passion, they were there. Um, but personally, for me, each to their own. But for me, I've got a real, I've, I've got a real dislike for them now. You know, I'm past replays that I've gone to, especially the first one. You know, they were quite happy to haggle, knock off four or five pound here and there if you spent so much. Understandable. But these days, they just they won't do. They won't. They won't haggle at all. I mean, and if they do, I. You know, I'm not going to mention any names, and I, I personally, I really don't care. Each to their own. It's how they operate. Fair play to them, but I did detect a sort of favoritism towards some of the people that they were selling games to. But you know, as I said, I'm I'm not going to go into a rant about it. But as I said, I'm I'm really starting to have a dislike towards console passion. You know, and also with them, I don't know if any of you guys. Can, you know, those that went noticed, they seem to have the same stock all the time. You know, I've, I've, I remember the first time, the first one I went to back in 2011. I'm, I'm, I saw games this time around that was that were there back then, you know. Whether or not they replaced stock on, or not, I don't, I don't know, but they just seem to be selling the same stock all the time. And, um, and obviously with the lacking training there's been there's been a couple of videos as to the reason why. Again, not gonna go into any details on that. It's, it's been done. But um you know, my concern is it's just gonna get worse every year. It's gonna you're gonna see sort of less training in on the game side, it's gonna be more on the merchandise and the, the memorabilia, the t-shirts, the mugs, the action figures, the comics. There was even a store there selling freaking swords. What does that have to do with gaming? I do not know. Whether it's connected to this cosplay. I don't know, but it just looked way out of place, and it was a freaking huge stall. I mean, um, so yeah, that was uh, a little rant there, but not intended. But yeah, other than that, thoroughly enjoyed the event. Um, but saying that, with the lacking training, I did manage to buy some stuff, some goodies, and also got some gifts from fellow YouTubers, which I'll go to that in a bit. And uh, of course, I did get some stuff back in London from Computer Exchange and Game. But we're having a fantastic weekend at, at Blackpool. So much so even my daughter wants to go back again next year. Um, Sunday, pretty much the same thing. Getting up early, having breakfast, going up to Norbrick. Um, on this, before, before, you know, on the Saturday, we, we saw, me and my daughter left at four o'clock. So we went back, we headed back to the B&B, &B, had some, you know, some tea. And from there, we went into town, you know, check out the sites. We went, we went to the Black Book Tower. We experienced the uh, that 4D experience that they were doing. We went to the tower itself. That was called these, that skylight they got. That's pretty freaky, actually. <laughs> but fun. Really enjoyed it. She certainly had a great time there. Now, the event itself, excuse me, the event itself was three days. And I, we paid, I paid for the three days. Um... But we were there four days because she wanted to go and visit Blackpool Zoo. So the Monday itself, I we didn't really actually go to the show. We went to the zoo. We got back around four, four something, about half past four. And about five-ish, 
my daughter was tired, so she went back to the B and B, and I said to her, "Look, I'm just going to quickly pop back into Norbert, see if there's any no, last minute items that I could buy before they close." Uh, but by the time I got there, some of the trades already left, and the trade halls itself was already closed. So I stayed an hour or so playing some of the games. I know for a fact by then, Monday five o'clock in the evening, most of the fellow YouTubers are gone. So yeah, so you know that's pretty much the weekend. You know, finishing, you know, leaving the uh, Norbrick before heading into town, do a bit of sightseeing. On the Tuesday, going home, we still had some, we still had some time, so we took one final trip into town. Popped into a, a really cool toy store. It's had a lot of sort of vintage action figures, some boxed, some unboxed. Really cool, and the smell itself is, you know, I felt at home there. It was awesome, you know. Some of the items were pretty pricey, but I never didn't buy anything. I was going to. I was, I was actually looking for some turtles. They did have a few, but ones that I already had. Um, but yeah, but it was a really cool store, um, a shop. Excellent shop. A little pricey, but next time, definitely going to go back there and uh, pick something up. Because that was a really cool um, shop. So yeah, and then um, after which we just sort of made our way back to London. Another seven hour drive back to London. And uh, of course, the for the rest of the week, the days that we stayed in, you know, obviously with my parents in London, just up and down Oxford Street, you know, Piccadilly, Regent Street, here and there, going to Hyde Park, and um, just popping into whatever computer exchange game store, you know, we came across. So yeah, that's basically it really. And I've waffled in a bit too long and uh, rambled a bit, but oh no, fantastic time. Um, what I'll do now, I'll show you the, the, the items that I got at Blackpool, uh, the gifts that I got from fellow YouTubers. As I mentioned before, um, I'll try and remember as many as I can, but if I do forget to mention some of you guys, I do apologise, not intended. But also what I'll do, I'll show you some items that I got before Blackpool, and also a trade that I did with a fellow YouTuber. So yeah, that's um, basically it really. And, uh, so what I'll do is I'll pause the camera because I've yet to. They're all still up there. I haven't got them ready, which I should have. So yeah, so um, back in a bit on to the pickups before Blackpool. Not that many at all because I've literally I've been I've been saving up for Blackpool. So I sort of held back on the buying, and also a trade that I did. I I'm not so sure whether it was a trade or a sell with, with with a fellow YouTuber, my good friend over in Tasmania, Tony Electric Adventures. Um, now this trade goes way back to actually last year's replay. I wasn't able to get anything there, but uh, my good friend over in London who's helped me in the past with MSX games, um, managed to get some games off him. So I'm not too sure whether it's a trade or a sell. I really can't remember. But if it's a sell, it was very cheap. Um, so yeah, so... Um, he had games that I was interested in, and uh, what he did, he's kept, um, you know, put them aside and um, eventually sent them over to me. He sent them over just after Christmas, whether it was in end of December, early January. I've yet to show them, and so I'm going to do that now. Um, one uh, Atari 800 game, one Famicom. And uh, two Famicoms and two MSX. So the one Atari game that I got from Tony was Frogger for the 800. Lovely condition. That's the Atari. The two MSX games. One's a Casio release, and that is a baseball game. Casio baseball. And finally, the last ever sex game is Sky Jaguar. Again, lovely condition. And the two Famicom games. First up is Road Fighter. And the final game, Image Fight. Again, lovely condition. So yeah, I'm really pleased to um, have these in my collection. Many thanks again, once again, Tony, for these. 
because again I can't remember if it was the sale or trade. This is going far back, way back. Um, so yeah, that was the trade. Now, a couple of items that I got. Again, some more Atari 800 games, tape based games. First up is a game called Pengon, which is um, basically uh, an arcade port of um, Pengu by Microdeal. Obviously they did a lot of games back in the day also for the um, the most well known for making games on the Dragon 32 and Nintendo computers. And they did uh, do a few games for um, other computers formats. No screenshot, just basically the uh, the tape itself. That was an eBay purchase. Came along with um, Yogi's um, what's it called? Great Escape. You can see some screenshots there. Standard tape. And finally, Pothole Pete. Platform game, very much in the same sort of style as Manic Miner. I do like those um, platform style games, type games. Screenshots there, if you can see that. I've got, now these three I got on eBay from a seller in the UK. I think they're just a pound each plus three, four pound postage. So I'm just building up my uh, tire collection. Um, also, I got from, uh, I don't know if it was an eBay seller in France, or I think it was in France. Uh, three more Atari 800 cards. First up, they're all unboxed. That's not a problem, I just really want to play them. And it's great to add them to the collection. First one is um, Joust. One of these left cartridges. Next up, Demon Attack. And the final one is Buck Rogers. I was also bidding on um, Zaxxon, but um, I got outbid. But uh, yeah, those are the three that I got from the seller. In, I think it was in France, and I think I paid in total, including postage, 20 pounds, because it's quite cheap. Quite cheap, so I'm really pleased to add some more games to my Atari 800 collection. I do like to uh, build up a collection for that, for that computer. Um, what else? Just the one Famicom game that I got from Japan, and that's Terra Cresta. I was actually bidding also on uh, this is going on the back of 2TUK's video that he did on the Retro Environment. And one of the games he tested was um, Hello K Kitty's World, something like that, and it just Basically, it was Balloon Kid, but with um, Hello Kitty, and I was bidding on one of those games. I did, I did win, but um, the game's not shown up, and it, I, I believe it's gone missing in the post. I've since contacted the seller and got my money back. So it was really disappointing. So I was so looking forward to playing that game, but um, it is quite cheap, so I'll get it at a later date. There's no hurry. But yeah, that was the only Famicom game that I got. Terra Crested. A couple more I'd like to get. Again, I don't want to go too crazy because I think I've just got about, just got about uh, got all the Famicom games that I want. So yeah, so next up, some games on the MSX, and then they're all homebrew. Now first up is uh, from a store called uh, uh, an online sh mail order shop called um, the Repros. I've got to what it's called now. Oh, crikey, I forgot what it's called. It's a repro shop. The MSX shop, something like that. I can't remember what it's called now. Over in France. Now, yeah, just one from this chat, and that is Pang. And that was um, 20 in total, 28 euros, in, including postage. Now, unfortunately, it did come with a padded up case. Luckily, I did have uh, a spare one, but the label itself got a f 
also got um, slightly ripped. I don't know if you can see it there. But I have since contacted the seller, and he's you know, on my next order, he will uh, send me another cover. Because I'm not too fussed, I uh, did have a spare case. And there's the cartridge itself, in lovely condition. Really pleased with that. Nice addition to the collection. That's Pang for the MSX. Now the other three homebrew, homebrew titles that I got for the MSX. First up is a game I from a shop called. Um, now this is in Spain. God, this is terrible. I should have prepared for this. But anyway, from these guys. Anyway, from a Spanish site. And the first game is called Zombie Near. Some, some screenshots of the back, sort of like a mazy type game. I don't know if you can see that. It's a great little game. And the cartridge comes with a nice little small instructions there. And the cartridge. And this was just 12 euros. So that was it's nice and cheapy. Just put that there for a second. Oh my god, I'm gonna make a mess of all this, am I? I'll just leave that there. Oh, I think he dropped it there on the floor. Oh, he stayed there. Okay, so the next two, well, I originally ordered two games, and that was Zombie Near and Rock and Rope for the MSX. Fantastic little game, but unfortunately it does not work. Hello you. Where are you? Melody. Yeah, unfortunately it does not work. I don't know why. I've tried it on two or three MSXs and even the MSX2, but I don't know. It doesn't work, which is really shame. I did contact the seller about this. And he was very happy to um, send me another game of my choice. But um, he didn't even ask for this back, so, you know, collection piece, I guess. Really shame, because I'm so looking forward to playing this. I mean, I can play this on a, on a ROM through an emulator, but it would be nice to play it on the actual machine itself. But, um, like I said, he didn't, he didn't ask for it back, so I kept it. So the game I asked for instead was a game called um, the Grills Quest. Grills Quest for the uh, Sangral Extended Edition. Like a amazing platform, uh, amazing puzzle sort of game. It's a great little game. Again, twelve pounds, twelve euros. This was twelve euros, obviously. There's a cartridge. Great little game. I have played it in the past, not for emulation. But I figured why not own it original, the actual cart itself. And there's the little small instructions. So yeah, really pleased with that. Those are my... Oh, hold on. Still got a couple more here. So... Gotta go this. It's all... Oh, it's all a mess here. Right, I'll just leave that there for a second. Um... Oh, I, I, ugh. Locally here at a car boot I picked up for the PlayStation 2 Pac-Man World, Pac World 3. It's just basically one of five euros for it. It's nice, box and complete. Figured why not. Do like the series. So yeah, for five euros. Can't go wrong there. Just a second. Uh, and I also picked up well, yeah. The new 3DS. This is the, uh, the Zelda edition, which has the pre-installed um, Majora's Mask. And um, I was hoping to get the no a normal new 3DS with a physical copy of um, Majora's Mask, but I didn't have it. So I figured, you know what, I'm just going to go for this one. And I also got myself downloaded some games. I downloaded um, Outrun, um, Fantasy Zone 2, Thunderblade, Afterburner, 
uh, Fantasy Zone 1. Now this game called um, Blue Kid 2. Very cute platform game. Also, quickly, quickly, quickly. I downloaded Gunman Clive 2. Really enjoyed the first one, and the sequel was just as good. Uh, I picked up recently on the MSX a homebrew game called Zombie Incident. Just been released for the new uh, for the on the Nintendo eShop. Fantastic little game. And also a game called um, Fair Rune. Which is sort of like a scaled down version of a you know a Zelda game. Really uh, fun game. Almost completed it. So yeah, so I've been buying quite a bit of um, games from the Nintendo eShop, which is um, which is cool. Really pleased with that. And then of course you've got the um, the Joy's mask. Companies pre installed with it, so yeah, and that was um, 200 and 230 euros. Obviously, it comes with a console, comes with the, uh, the little that statue, the skull kid. So yeah, really pleased with that. Just turn that off. So that's got that. What else? Anything else? Quickly, quickly. Um, just pick up a couple of vinyls from eBay. I'm not collecting the old vinyl, so I pick up the uh, the third album from the Thompson Twins. The third album as a trio, as they are a trio, and this was their last one. Then they went sort of like duo. Done with that. Uh, Wang Chong. Set points uh, on a curve. Main track probably being the Dance All Days. Now this is their second album, this is their third album. See that? And the main track on air being um, Everybody Wang Chong tonight. I think I've got that all I've got them all I've got all these three for £25 including postage. For those who don't know Wang Chong, anyone that's watched the pilot episode of The Walking Dead, Space Junk, that's them. So yeah, really cool. As pickups go before Blackpool, I think that's it. I hope I haven't missed anything else. I think that's it. Can't think of anything else. Can't see anything else. If I had, oh well. Yeah, I think that's it. So what I'll do now, quickly pause, put this all away and um, get the items that I got from Blackpool and the gifts that I got from fellow YouTubers. Not so stuff that I got from Blackpool. Um, I didn't get that much at all, but I, you know, obviously with the lacking traits, but uh, I still managed to come back with some decent items. So what I'll do is I'll show you the items that I got and then I'll show you guys the items, the, the, the gifts that I got from fellow YouTubers. For those who know, there wasn't hardly, in fact, there wasn't any 8-bit gaming. The likes of the Spectrum, Commodore, Amstrad, Atari, MSX, whatnot. But there was one store, and Richard Dave and Nintendo can confirm me on this. Don't know what the name of the store was, but they had the usual Master System, NES, Super Nintendo, Mega Drive, Game Gear, you name it. But underneath the table, there was this brown box, about so big. And in it was some Spectrum games. Now, obviously, he got there. Retro Dave Nintendo got there first. So he took the uh, most of the good stuff. But there were still items there that I was quite happy to take. And there were some games that I actually wanted to originally get. Oh, I do also have a Spectrum. I have a Spectrum Plus, And uh, I just want to build up a small collection. I don't want to go crazy because eventually I do want to get um, one of these flash devices. So I can just, you know, good to go there. But yeah, the games that I got, 
Um, in total, I think I paid for them. The bride. Missing two. Hmm? Oh no, they're all here. Two, four, five, fifty, six, seven, eight pound in total for these. So first up is uh, two single cassette games. One is um, Rough and Ready by High Tech Budget Label, and this is their um, Hanna Barbera series. So it's a platformer, as you can see by the screenshots at the back. Now I've got this game also coming for the Atari 100 and the Amstrad. Um, but I've, I've, I've already got it for the Amiga that I got last year from uh, Craig's here again. I got this and uh, the Yogi games. So yeah, I'm really pleased to uh, have this now on the Spectrum. A game that I should play back in the day at a friend's house. A Mastertronic game, and that is Caves of Doom. Really cool uh, little platform game, very much in the style of Manic Miner. I do like those type of games. Yeah, really pleased with that. I think that was about 50p. 50p, because it's the original yellow casing. It's really cool. Next up, Match Day by Ocean. Iconic game. It is boxed and complete. They're boxed and complete. The instructions are actually on the inlay itself. Screenshots on the back of the game. It's in lovely condition. That was a pound fifty. Next up, Shinobi. Um, great little port of the arcade. Plays, I think it plays really well. Played it back in the day. Uh, played it on emulation. Don't think the. Uh, You've got the Amstrad Commodore and the Spectrum screenshots there. I think it's a great little game. Really pleased to have that. Again, it's complete. Structures on the inlay. So yeah, that was, again, two, uh, £1.50. And then the last two compilations, box games, £2 each. First up is Arcade Force 4. Box and complete. Two tapes includes Gauntlet and the Deeper Dungeon, Gauntlet and the Deeper Dungeons, Roadrunner, Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom, and Metrocross. Some screenshots on the back. Well, I was really pleased to find this because I was actually looking out for this on eBay, so I was really chuffed when I saw it there at the show, the event. Another compilation is the uh, Star Games Karate Ace. Again, it's in lovely condition, boxed and complete with the instructions. And of course, the two tapes. And games are, as you can see there, A Way of Exploding Fist, Bruce Lee, Kung Fu Master, Avenger, Samurai Trilogy, Yuchi Mata, and Way of the Tiger. So I'm really pleased to get this. So those are the Spectrum games that I got and my camera telling me that the uh, memory is going to run out. So back in the sec. Right then, um, items that I got at um, Console Passion. Um, first up I got two Dreamcast games, nothing special. These are just games I owned back in the days. Thought I'd um, you know, get them back into the collection. So first up for £9, box and complete and in nice condition is Echo the Dolphin. See that? Nine pound. So I'm really pleased to have this back in the collection. Great little game. And the next game, um, wasn't too sure whether to get this or not because it does have some fading on the side and also the front. Now looking at it. But it's a game that I owned back in the day, and uh, it, was a, it was eight pound. I really just want to play it again, so I'm not really too fussed. 
and that is pen pen. As you can see, there is a. I don't know if you can see that, but there is slight fading there. Sorry about the glare there. But eight pounds. There is a slight scratch on the disc. That's the thing with console passion. You, you really can't open them and check to see whether these games are in great condition or not. It's just a gamble, really. But eight pounds. Just to play it again, game got owned back in the day. I'm okay with that. Just have to live with the uh, the sun fade. PC Engine game. Now, this game I have seen three times at Console Passion. The times that I've gone, yeah, it's never sold. And I've seen it on their website. It's same price. It's a PC Engine CD game. And it's a game called Pop and Magic. I've been wanting to get this game for quite some time now. £40. It goes roughly for the same price on eBay. 40 45 Then postage, you know, consider, you know, um, postage consideration. You end up paying about £50, £55. So £40, you know, I'm happy with it. It's basically, the game itself is sort of somewhat like... Um, Plays very much in the same as Rodland, Bubble Bubble. There's that type of um, platform game. I don't know if you can see screenshots there. It's in great condition. Yeah, and I'm happy to uh, have that in the collection. £40, fair price. Not going to get it any cheaper on eBay. So, yeah, really pleased with that. And the next game is a game I used to own back in the day. I had the US version, but this is the Japanese version. Again, this is a game that I've seen a couple times at Console Passion. It's never sold, and I, can, and I know why. Because again, it's got some sun fading, and that is Toe Jam and L. As you can see there, there is some slight. Sorry about that over there. I don't know if you can see that. And again, the issue that you can't open these games to check whether they're in good condition or not. It, you know, you're not, they won't let you. It is a gamble. I don't know if you can see that. There is some slight fading to it. And that was £18. As I've mentioned before, mentioned already, I've seen it on two occasions now at, at some replay at Console Passion. It's never sold. I'm guessing it's because of the, uh, the sun fade. But I can live with it, but then again, eighteen pounds. The manning itself is in wonky condition, and the carriage. A slight tear there, or rip. See, it's not in the best condition. For eighteen pound, you'd figure you know it'd be slightly better condition than that. But I guess I'm going to have to live with it now. But just to play it, it's going to have to do. But as I said, with Console Passion, I really do dislike them. I don't think I'd buy any more games from them. Because, I mean, look at the state of this, this manual. I mean, for £18. Now, they also had um, a game that I wanted. Again, it's been there on numerous occasions. Was the uh, Wonder Boy in uh, not Monster Land? Wonder Boy's uh, Wonder Boy Three Monster Land for the Mega Drive. I'm glad I did. They wanted um, fifteen pound for it. I'm glad I did it because it, it, there was some fade. I dread to think what the cartridge would look like because you, know, you can't. You can't. They won't let you uh, check the game out to see if it's in good condition or not. So I'm glad I didn't get it. I'm just going to have to look out for that on eBay at some point. There's no real hurry for it, though. So, so yeah. Toe Jam and L. On the uh, Mega Drive, Japanese version. Now, the final game that I got at Console Passion was... by chance, really, because I bumped into Razmataz Raz, and he did mention that Console Passion was... You know, he told me if, if, if I'd seen the MSX games that they were selling. I was going, no, I didn't. 
you know. So obviously I went back the next day, and they're in this, you know, on the shelf right at the bottom, small little corner, and they did have um, three or four games. And this one they had, I don't own it, for seventeen pounds. A little pricey again. Condition's not too bad. For the MSX, Konami's ping pong. So, it isn't, again, it is a little pricey, but it's in not too bad condition. The manual's in a lot better condition than the, uh, the Toe Jammer now. The carriage is in uh, nice condition. I know I could get cheaper on eBay, but you know, it was there and then, you know, then and there. How you want to put it? I figured, why not? I got it. Seventeen pounds. I'm really pleased to uh, add it to the collection. So I'll put that in its little bagging later. And the final game that I oh, actually, I did, I did get one more. Final game, another game that I got. It's just two pounds for the original Xbox. I did have this game back in the day. Not the best of games, but it's a game that um, a friend in London, MSX. He was senior producer on. He did give me this game back then. I don't know what, what happened to it. Must have lost it or sold it. But it was there. I think, you know what, I'm going to get this game back into my collection. Senior, it was a friend who was a senior produ uh, producer on, and that is Judge Dredd. So, nice to have this game back into collection, seeing it was a friend who's behind it. Very good friend of mine who was a uh, senior producer on the game. Oh, but his box is complete. It's in lovely condition. Two pound. So yeah. Judge Dredd. Now the final game is a homebrew game for the Atari 2600. Now, I'm not too sure whether you guys know, but there is this retro gaming podcast called Retro Gaming Roundup. Now I've been following these guys for quite some time though. A good few years now. Um, basically, they're two guys from America and one from the UK. And uh, now they were working on a game, an Atari game, 2600 game, quite, you know, a while back. And they were going to be there last year, which I couldn't go and sell the game. So I was really pleased to find out that they were there again this year and they still had copies of the games to sell. Now this is basically a game based on the uh, Atari game Adventure. It's basically an incident that somewhat occurred to them at the, um, the CEX, CGE show in Las Vegas. And they put it into a game. And that is a game called Welcome to... Uh, CG, oh god no. Oh, right. Issues with the camera as always, but I have got myself a new camera, but unfortunately I've left it at the in-law, so I'll we'll have to make do with this one for the time being. Um, I've got the box over there, I can show you the, the camera that I've got, but I just want to quickly show you uh, the last game that I got at Replay, and it's a homebrew title for the Atari 2600. Um, if any, any of you guys know, there is a retro gaming podcast called the Retro Gaming Roundup, and I've and they've been going on for quite a few years now. Um, I do a podcast every month. Fantastic show. I'll put links below to their show. Do head on over checking out. Download a, a, an episode. Great podcast. And it's basically two guys from the States and one from the UK. And a while back, they set about doing uh, a game for the, the uh, Atari 2600. And it's basically adventures, but they sort of done it into their own version. And it's basically... Um, a true story that happened to them back in 2010 at the Classic Gaming Expo. Now the show was coming to an end and they were just finishing off an interview. But while their backs were turned, a strange fellow runs off with uh, a spindle of 100 CDs of their um, promo shows. Uh, and basically um, he's become known as the, the deaf CD thief because he is deaf. And so they've just gone... You know, for a bit of fun, because 
that again based on on that event and basically you are the uh, the deaf CD thief and you've just stolen a whole bundle of CDs from the show of the show and you've got to make your way out of the uh, of the of the expo without being caught by the uh, the hosts themselves who who are after you so yeah I knew about this game a while back last year and they were going to be well they were at replay last year but unfortunately I couldn't go and um, so I was really pleased to find out that they were there this year and they still had copies of the game because they're only limited to about 60 I think there were 60 um, NTSC and uh, I can't I'm not too sure how many there were in PAL um, so yes yeah, so I was really pleased to see that they were there and they still had copies of the game and it was £25, but for me personally, it's £25 well spent. And as I said, it's basically adventures in in, in their own way, interpreted into the uh, to what happened to them back, back in 2010. So yeah, so here is the game. So it's welcome to um, CGE <laughs> Adventures Las Vegas. Now the camera's telling me it's run out of memory again, so... I really don't know, so I'm gonna to have to be quick. So there you go, that's the cover, and on the back you got the, the the hosts of the show, and there you got a little drawing there. You got the uh, the Death CD thief. So yeah, really pleased to get this. So you got um, there we got the game itself. condition you get two dice obviously being Las Vegas uh, the instructions and a VIP sort of entry card retro game roundup £25 well spent really pleased not only that to make it even more special I asked the guys there's only two of them there unfortunately but I may go as far as to send this manual to the states and have the uh, the third dude uh, sign it, and um, there we go. Yeah, two of them did sign it, so I'm really pleased. It makes it even more special. And uh, I did some filming around the store, and uh, they cheekily waved back. So it just made it all worthwhile. Really excellent. Um, so like I said, twenty five pounds, well spent. So that was um, my final game. A home retitle for the Atari 2600. So pleased to have this back in, in it. Back, so pleased to have this into the collection. Been after this game for quite some time. And I was really, you know, I was getting worried that it would sell out because, as I said, it's only limited to, limited to about 60. So there you go. My final game at replay. Now, camera's telling me I've run out of space. Uh, just got about a minute left. So what I'll do is I'll uh, free up some space. And be back and show you guys the gifts that I got from fellow YouTubers. So back in the so on to the gifts that I got from fellow YouTubers. And if I forget any of your names, I do apologize. Please, please do not be offended. It's not intended, but it was just such an awesome, awesome re weekend. Unforgettable without it. It's just great meeting up with guys with the same interest, retro or modern gaming at these events awesome you know and, and may it continue but as I mentioned earlier on you know at the queue seeing familiar faces the likes of Richard Turner's Cyber Snake 7 Richard Dave Nintendo um, Minx 36 Cajonis Deloro uh, certain very sure that Rasmataz Raz was there and at the event bumped into the likes of um, Dark Twin Row we had a, a chat there Talking about the uh, the Pokemons because obviously my daughter she was with me and she she's into her Pokemons as well. Um, so from retro, had a brief chat there. Um, Tutu UK, uh, Rich King Retro, Monkey Spans Five Thousand, um, Gasset Steve. Uh, who else? Uh, God, I'm a bit. Yeah, Novabuck, <laughs> Champion Two D Rob. There was a few hours, I know I'm going to forget. Um, also, was it on the last... So it was on the Sunday, it was almost at the end. I had a brief, brief chat with um, 
Gadget UK164. Hopefully next year, mate, we'll have a longer chat. Who else? Oh, good. Uh, Shot 16, a brief chat there. Uh, anyone else? There was a few others, but I just can't remember at the top of my head. As I said, it was just such an awesome weekend. It was, it was great meeting up with you guys. And like I said, I hope it, c it continues. Um, I think I mentioned 2 to UK. Uh, so yeah, so on to the gifts that I got from uh, fellow YouTubers. First up, 2 to UK. Now I met him on a Saturday. And he, he mentioned to me that uh, he had something for me. But it wasn't until Sunday that I got I got the items. It was a hand me over this bag. It was heavy. I thought, what the hell's in here? And um, I do remember asking. He had some Atari games. If you wouldn't mind putting them aside, and I'll trade or buy them off him. And I handed him over one Famicom game for really bad because you know he gave me this big bag full of stuff, and, and I still I owe you, mate. I have not forgotten. As soon as I can come up with something, I will send it over to you. Yeah, it was for the Xbox games and um, was it a Game Boy game, and now these Atari games. And also, he gave me a whole bunch of manuals, Amiga, Atari ST. Unfortunately, I couldn't bring them over with me. I had to leave them at my parents because I was already 28 kilos on the suitcase. And of course, the EasyJet, they allow, only allow you 20. My parents are coming over in a few months and they'll bring it over. I just brought the games because obviously. I want to play the games. So the Atari games that I got from uh, Tutu UK. The first one was a cassette. And it's, uh, it's like a compilation. Which includes uh, Star Raiders, Asteroids, Missile Command, Centipede and Airstrike 2. I take it these are, these are one of the uh, come, come packaged with the, the computer. Sorry about the guy there. But yeah. Awesome stuff to have. And the three carts that I got. First up was Blue Max. Slight little rattle there. We're trying to trying to get it out, but obviously these these car these these laser cartridges are sealed tight, so you know don't know whether I can get that little whatever it is in there out. Um, next up is um, an older cart and it's Pac-Man. One of these left cartridges again. And finally, Miss Pac-Man. So that's awesome of you, uh, Stuart, to uh, give me those. I haven't forgotten. As soon as I can come up with something, I will send it over to you. Yeah, I feel really bad that you gave me all, the, all this stuff. I've only just gave you just the one family con game. But I haven't forgotten. So next up, it was um, actually Dave Nintendo. I met him at the show. Again, I think it was on a Saturday. Again, he came up to me with a bag and said, if you were interested, there were a whole bunch of Spectrum games. You know, pick out which ones you want. Or if you want the whole lot, take them. Doesn't matter. So I took the whole lot. And there was a, couple, a few games there that I was, I was interested. Now, the others, I since traded them on to uh, Retro Games, a mail order shop in the UK. To help me towards a trade of a couple of items that I want that I, that's coming from them. So I hope you don't mind, David. But I've kept these ones, and they are Disco Dad, Treasure Island, Punchy. I do have this on the MSX, so it's really cool to have this now on, on the Spectrum. And also, Oh Mummy. I do have this on the Amstrad. I'm also planning to get the MSX version, but again, nice to have the uh, Spectrum version, so really pleased with that. And also some, some loose cassettes. I kept these ones. First up is um, Crazy Golf by Mr. Micro. They made a lot of games for the MSX back in the day. Um, budget label, but Aliens. Super Stuntman. Mastertronic Panther and finally Mastertronic again and that's Milk Race I do have this on the MSX but 
Are we interested to uh, play the Spectrum version? Although it will be a Spectrum port. It's the same as the MSX, because the MSX is a Spectrum port. So yeah, those are the gifts that I got from Richard David Taylor. So again, once again, mate, many thanks. That was really kind of you. Uh, so, oh, so next up, everyone's got one, and you'll know who I'm talking about now. And that is Richard Turner. He's been doing paintings for fellow YouTubers. He did me one. And it is, of course, uh, Pentaru. Anyone knows it? Pentaru? Parodius? Now, he's the son to uh, is it Penta, the arcade, um, got a Antarctic Adventure on the MSX, the little penguin there, and Penguin Adventure. Penta, this is his son Pentaro, you'll be more familiar with him on the Parodius games. So yeah, so he painted me that, which is awesome, awesome, so I'll be hanging out that. I still need to get a frame. I was, I was a little worried that it wouldn't make the journey, but as you can see, it's all in one piece. And I'm really pleased with that. Many thanks once again, Richard, for doing for doing this. Definitely, and of course, the famous signature. So yeah, really pleased with that. And that'll be going up and all as soon as I get a frame for, for it. Great, just great use of colours, mate. Like the uh, the blue with the purple and the white. Well and truly uh, planned out. He's got my YouTube name there. there. Excellent mate. Many thanks again. It's a thumbs up for me, definitely. So there you go. That's the painting that I got from Richard Turner. Now the final gift that I got was from uh, Mr. Honus Did Oro. Um, last year I sent him uh, a Famicom game. I really didn't need it because it, uh, it was Street Fighter Alpha 2. Not really into my beat-em-ups and I had no use for it. So, you know, I it would go to a good home and no better home than, than going to uh, Cajones Doloro. Because he's going for um, a jack sort of small collection of um, shoot em up and beat em ups on the Super Famicom and various other systems. I did mention this in the, in the past, if he had any left, he did. He said he didn't have any, but should he come up, should he do any, he'll uh, save me one. And he did, he came up, he uh, brought one along to the show. Awesome, 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 without a doubt. Uh, it's a t-shirt. Obviously he's got the uh, the rising sun, Japanese rising sun. And obviously he's got his, uh, his happy face there, which was designed by the Highlander. Awesome, I love the artwork to this, and it's really awesome to have. So many thanks, mate, for, for giving one of your t-shirts. I'm sure wear it with, uh, with Proud. Awesome stuff. Really pleased. So those are the gifts that I got from fellow YouTubers. Again, many, many thanks to all of you guys. Awesome gifts. And yeah, so I think that was about it, really. Down there. So yeah, so now I'll... Uh, those are... In terms of Blackpool, I did get... When I went to town, I did get a couple games. There was a CEX in Blackpool. I did get some games, a couple games there for the PS3. Uh, I've got them up there, aren't I? Be right back. Also, I forgot to show you a couple items I've, that my daughter got at the show. Um, she loves her RPGs. So she picked up for the PSP, Popular Croix. That was a fiver. I do believe that goes for a lot more on eBay. So I was really, you know, she was really chuffed to pick that up for that at that price. I know it goes for a lot more than that on eBay. But Popolo Christ, awesome little uh, RPG. She's got some screenshots on the back. You can see that. So it is boxed and complete. And that was just a fiver. And she picked up a play, uh, PlayStation 3 title that she'd been after for quite some time because she's got the series. So she was so chuffed to get 
to see this one there and that is Dishgaya 4 she loves this series, she's got the comics because she loves the series she plays it on, on the Playstation 2, she plays it on the PSP she's got number 3, now number 4 on, on the on the Playstation 3 um, her heart nearly, <laughs> nearly missed the beat when she saw she saw the game, but somebody picked it up. You should have seen her face. But the sigh of relief when the, the, the chat put it back down again, didn't want it. So just literally, she just ran to it and picked it up. It was £18, but she had a budget and she bought it. And she was happy as a bunny. It is boxed and complete. So those are the games that she got at um, at replay, and as I mentioned, there was a computer exchange in Blackpool, and we got a couple of items there. Now she picked up White Knight Chronicles for the PS3. Again, that was a fiver. A little disappointed it didn't come with a manual, but she's not too bothered. But I'll try and look out for a manual so she can uh, have it complete. That was a fiver. Yeah, I've heard good things about that game, and there is a number two, but she's going to play the first one, see how it goes. And then for a tenner, she picked up Cross Edge. Again, another RPG. She's just fanatic on RPGs, she just loves them. Again, it is complete, but she is playing it. See screenshots there. And I just got. Two games. First up is Dark Siders 2, that was just £6. It is complete. In lovely condition. And even though I'm not a I'm not really into my beat mats, but with my daughter at the show, she was really into um, playing a lot of the beat em ups, so I sort of like Played along with her. So I think, you know what, I want to get some beat-em-ups for us to play at home. So I picked up for the PlayStation 3 Ultra Street Fighter 4. For us to play. You know, if she's not playing RPGs, she is playing beat-em-ups. Because she does like the, uh, the beat-em-ups. Uh, one game that she liked playing a lot at the show was um, Rival Schools 2 on the, uh, on the Dreamcast. She really did enjoy that game. So... I'm, I'm going to sort of look on eBay now and get the Japanese version because the PAL version goes for quite a, no, quite a bit. It goes for about, you know, the cheapest I've seen it goes about £70, £80. Pound, upwards to about £130, pound. £40. Mad. And the Japanese version, you can get it as cheap as um, £20. Pound. So yeah, so that's um, Ultra Street Fighter 4. Again, that was, that was actually that was the tenor. Now... I'm not sure if it comes with a manual or not, it just comes with this little card of showing you the controls. And I'm not, I don't know, whether it comes with a manual or not, I'm not too sure. But anyway, that's that. Uh, also, I popped into HMV, there was a HMV there too, picked up a CD. And I picked up the latest album for the Prodigy. Awesome album, fantastic. Love it. Highly recommend it. If you like this sort of thing. So yeah, Blackpool. Get the receipt. Something to remember by. So yeah, that was just a tenner. Awesome stuff. Uh, so yeah, those are the pickups at Blackpool. So now, back in London, at my parents' place, I had a couple packages waiting for me. First up is the Atari 2600 game that I've been after for quite some time. I've got a, a loose cart, and it's just reminded me now that I need to send that to a fellow YouTuber. It's yet to do so. But don't worry, mate, if, you, if you're watching, it'll be on its way to you shortly. Uh, and that is the Super Cobra. It is boxed and complete. I do like these um, Parker Brother covers. Awesome stuff. Comes with a manual, a uh, little catalogue, 
with their upcoming games. And of course you've got the cart, which is in a lovely condition. Did pay a fair bit for that. I paid uh, £20 including postage, but I did want it. Now, they had a um, another game that I wanted on the 20, entire 2600, also by the Parker Brothers, was, um, of course, it's Skippy. I forgot what it's, uh, forgot what it's called now. Oh, crikey's. It's in here. Every set. Sky Skipper. I hope you can see that. I hope you can be able to see that. Sky Skipper. Now they actually had that at console passion, but they wanted £22 for it. You know. Yeah, you know, I don't pay twenty pound for it, but to pay another twenty pound for another for a Atari twenty six hundred game, I just left it. It was in lovely condition too, oh, on the outside anyway. But uh, I would like to get it. I would like to get Sky Skipper and Tutankhamun. I'd like to get them boxed because they just love these covers. Awesome, so nostalgic. So yeah, I had that waiting for me. Also, I had another Atari eight hundred game called uh, Special Delivery. Christmas theme game. It is box and complete. And that was just a couple of pounds including postage. I'm really pleased with that. And also, I got a couple of uh, tabletop LED handhelds. Now one of them, if you've watched uh, Richard Turner's video, he, he, I sent him one of them. It was, it was actually my one because I bought this one and that same game came along with it. So the first one that I got is, is a game of tabletop I've been after quite some time and that is Super Cobra. It's in lovely condition. Unfortunately I don't have any batteries to test it. But it does work because I, I have played it back home. While I was in London, just I threw the uh, the batteries out because I didn't want any leakage. And the game that I sent over to Richard Turner, that was my my one, because this one came along for the ride, and that is Caveman. Again, it's in lovely condition, and all this lot was forty pound, including postage. So yeah, really pleased to get to get these. You know, I've already had this, but this was the one I was after, and this one just came along for the ride. It's forty pound including postage for the two. So yeah, really pleased. There's only uh, two more that I'm after, and which goes back to the Spectrum games that Retro Dave Nintendo gave me that I didn't keep. I sent them to Retro Games to use as part of trade that. Hopefully, will be coming in the next few weeks. It's another tabletop, but another tabletop that I'm after also is um, it's called Kingman, which is by Tommy. I'm also after that one. But uh, yeah, when the the other one that eventually does come along, obviously I will show it in an upcoming video. So yeah, really pleased with these. So that's Super Cobra. And Caveman, the one I used to have back in the day was sort of like a gold one, but I've been told that this is the, the more the rarer one. But I tend to see more of the, this one than I do of the gold one, so really don't know. But that, yeah, really pleased with those. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Before I forget, oh, I picked, oh, cross. Bear with me a sec here. I picked up. The, the uh, book of Zine, Master System and NES. So yeah, got that at the, uh, no, I actually got that from Dominic Smith. I actually got it at Dominic Smith from Blackpool. And my daughter picked up in Blackpool. We were at Sainsbury's at the time. She picked up, um, she, again, she loves her manga, comics. 
the uh, Neo magazine, which is all based on uh, everything on manga, music, comics, you name it. Actually, I want to see this film. The uh, Nadia, The Secret of the Blue Water. Remember uh, a Mega Drive game back in the day? This character by Namco. And ever since, I've always wanted to do, play the game and uh, see the animation. And I do believe it's, been, it's going to be released in the UK shortly, so looking forward to that. So, yeah. Pleased with that. And she wants me to get the next issue, which came out on uh, May the 14th, which was my birthday. So, yeah. She's got to, because apparently, was it a couple of weeks? There's an anime.com convention going happening in London. She's really gutted she can't go to it. But yeah, those two magazines. Um, I got some comics from Forbidden Planet. She, my daughter bought a whole stack of them. I'm not going to show you them because she, I mean, it's, it's like that. So many. It must be about 15, 16 comics. I got five. I got the first three volumes of um, Bio Mega. Really cool uh, sci fi horror. Awesome stuff. They did have number four and five and six, but when I went back the next day, because I only just bought the three, they'd already gone. So, what I did then is just pick up these two the Zelda comics. And this is the um, Ocarina of Time. This is volume one and two. Volume three is Majora's Mask, and then you got the others, which is Four Seasons and blah 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 blah. In time, I'll I'll get them. Yeah, awesome to have. Now, Forbidden Planet are doing a three for two, so yeah. So hence why my how, why my daughter got so many of them. She took the uh, the liberties on the offer on the offer. And uh, then most of it now is just stuff that we got from uh, Computer Exchange, really. Um, I've got a couple of CDs, music CDs. I do like ELO. That's the uh, Time album. I would like to get the vinyl to this, but the CD does have uh, three extra tracks. But as I said, I would like to get the vinyl version to this. Bit of uh, guilty pleasure here. The monkeys. Used to watch them a lot as a kid. I told my daughter they're equivalent to. Um, she's a big Time Rush fan, so I said they're equivalent to them. Really. You know they had their own TV show. They, they did their music, just like Big Time Rush, really, because she's a big fan of them. So yeah, guilty pleasure there. The monkeys picked that up for just a couple of pounds. Um, onto the games. Uh, well done with it. Uh, here in a sec. I've got just the one Xbox One title, and that is Killer Instinct. Again, just keeping to the beat em up theme. So that, so that me and my daughter can play. It's got the codes to download the uh, the season two characters, I believe. Season one, a plus one from season two. Yeah. Keeping up with the beat em up theme, Mortal Kombat 10. Now she played this at the show, she loved it. They, they had it running on the PC. She got annoyed with some little kid there because he kept hogging this bloody machine. Every time she wanted to play it, he was always there. When she finally got to play it, she played it a few times after that, but she loved it. So in the end, you know what? Had a bit of money left. CEX picked this up for uh, 48. Pricey, but you know, something to remember the uh, the trip by. And that was, um, I think that was eight pound. Eight or ten pound. For the, uh, the second title I got for the PlayStation 4, Alien Isolation. Haven't played it yet, but I've heard good things about it. But I'm also told it's just the one alien. So, we'll see. I'll put that down, show you guys that already, show you that already. I picked up uh, 
a Blu-ray. I do like the original films. I'm not so keen at the direction they went with the uh, the new one, but it's, overall, it's still a good action film. And that is the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's in Blu-ray. So the characters themselves, so got, you know, fucking giants in this film. It's supposed to be teenagers. But uh, but other than that, it's still a good action film. And for eight pounds, can't go wrong. So put that there. So onto the I don't think she got any more games for her after that. No, I don't think she got any more games after that. It's just mostly me now. So yeah, so all from uh, Computer Exchange. First up is Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures, number one. There is a number two, hoping to get at some point. Great little game. I think this was just it was a tenner. Lovely condition, box and complete. DMC, Devil May Cry. That was six pound, box and complete. A game I've been interested in for quite some time, and that is Puppeteer. That was six pound, box and complete. Uh, Castlevania 2, specifically uh, Lords of Shadow 2. Again, it's box and complete. And the final game, F1 Race Stars. Again, that was £6. So, yeah, those are the games. I don't think there's any more. But she did um, get some. I picked up some movies from Computer Exchange. It's all going to fall over, I know that. There we go. It should be right there. I picked up Star Trek, the original Star Trek. Flash Gordon. Yeah, guilty pleasure there. The original Hills of Eyes. They're all about £2, £3 each. Vampire Hunter D. I had this on video, so really pleased to get this on DVD. The Sky Crawlers. Journey to Agatha. Awesome animation. Very much in the sort of same sort of style as the, the Ghibli. Awesome. Really awesome animation that is. And I picked up This Is England. Do you remember watching the series? I didn't know there was a film. So yeah. Awesome stuff there. Uh, what else? She, my daughter picked up some animes for her for herself. This is pure kid stuff. This is not card captures the movie. As you can see. She picked up a couple of uh, Naruto films. Sword Art Online and finally Guilty Crown which is the uh, I think it's just a complete no it's not actually it's part 1 episodes 1 to 11 or 2 discs and this one is part 1 episodes 1 to 7 so yeah I think that's about it. Can't, be, can't see anything else. One, one more item, and I promise you that is it. And this is going back to replay, Blackboard, of course. And I don't know if you guys saw there was a Coleco Vision there. I don't know where it was. I don't know if it was at Console Passion or another store, but it was bundled with six games. But they wanted the £125 for it. Now, I was also, I was really tempted, but at the same time, that they, they obviously they were selling at uh, Funstock. Funstock also had a stall there at the entrance. They were selling the Retro and 5 uh, come, I think it was 130 or 120 I was really tempted to buy either, either the Coleco Vision or the Retro N5. But if I'd done that, you know, I didn't have much with me. It would have cleaned me up completely. Um, so yeah, so I had to let it go 
Now, when we went back to London, I mentioned this to a friend of mine, the same chap who helps me out with the MSX. I popped around to his place one evening. It's that thing I, I explained to him, you know, I'd love to have a ColecoVision back into my collection, but the only problem with ColecoVisions, you know, I've probably mentioned this before, they're easy to break down and they're difficult to fix. And he started sort of smiling and grinning at me, and I thought, well, and he pointed to me down below to one of the shelves, and there was something wrapped up in a plastic bag, and he goes, you can have it if you want. I think you have what? And he got it out, it was, it's a ColecoVision. I was going, oh, are you serious? And funny enough, it was bundled with six games too. I thought, he goes, you had no use for them. You had no use for it. I said, look, if you don't want it, I'll take. I'll buy it off you. I mean, he told me how much he got it for. And it was agreed that, you know, he'd want 20 quid for it. I said, if you're sure, I'll buy it off you. You know, 20 quid, you know, that's a buck. You know, I mean, they're asking 125 at replay. It's in the same condition. It's nice and clean. Obviously, it's going to have your dust in there. But nothing major. And I'll just show it to you. It's actually hooked up to the TV. And you can see it there. Awesome machine. I had one of these back in the day. Loved it. I had this and the MSX at the same time one Christmas. I was a happy bunny that year. A Christmas to remember. And as I said, since then I've always wanted to get a Clico back into the collection. But it's just that issue with the e they break down easy and it's become so difficult to fix. And funny enough, this does have an issue. And this is a common pro problem with the Clico visions, and it's the power switch. What happens is some of the games get glitchy or off colour, not the right colours. But there is a way around it by replacing the power switch. I have looked into it, I'm going to do that. But that's really the only issue it has. Other than that, it's in perfect working order. For £20, you can't go wrong. So I'm really pleased with that. Now, I always. Maybe it's just me. Some Clecos that I've seen, some of the US Clecos, the the joysticks are built in, but these ones are not, because I, you know, I do actually remember using these for the MSX back in the day. But, yeah, you can uh, take off the joysticks. I don't think you could do that with the US version. I could be wrong. Oh, I'm not making any sense. But anyway, Calico, 20 quid. I love it. And of course, it came with six games. Carnival, Saxon, Cosmic Avenger. Love this game. Looks like a US copy of Mousetrap. Even comes with the uh, these little um, what you call them inserts. So yeah, uh, Blackjack and Poker, and finally Donkey Kong. So yeah, £20, excellent stuff. And what I'm planning to do is just probably just get back the games that I used to have back in the day, which is Ladybug, Donkey Kong Jr., Looping, Turbo, I do believe that that's. I also had. I did have Donkey Kong. I think those are the games I just had back in the day. So yeah, I'm just going to stick to having those games. And then what I'll do is there is a. I've come across a site that sells a flash cart for the Coleco Vision, and they've done it in the same sort of style as the Coleco cart, with an SD card slot that you can just stick on ROMs and you know play it on the real machine. And you're good to go. So yeah, I'd like to do that. It is a hundred dollars for the cartridge itself, but then again, these other carts and flash cards, they are expensive. So yeah, I think I've waffled on enough. I don't think I have anything more to show. No. So that's about it. So yeah, awesome weekend at Blackpool. Great meeting up with you guys.
awesome, awesome. What more can I say that hasn't been said already? And I just, like I said, I just hope it continues that way. Meeting up at these events and having a good time. And, you know, as I said, just sh sharing the same interests we have. Gaming, retro or modern. So, yeah, so that's it from me. Until I do have some more items coming to post, but it won't be for a week or two now. Uh, I've got a tabletop that's going to be sent to my mum's, my parents' place. They intend they're going to send it to me. I do have some more items coming. Which event, when they do arrive, I will upload a video. So until the next time, hope I haven't bored you with this video. Bye for now and uh, take care.